allegations by numerous women who say the Hollywood mogul sexually harassed them. A pattern of company meetings that they thought were little more than cover for predatory advances on vulnerable women. Decades of sexual assault and serious sexual harassment allegations against Hollywood mega producer Harvey Weinstein. In October of 2017, Harvey Weinstein was accused of sexual harassment in reports published by the New York Times and the New Yorker, citing dozens of allegations that detailed inappropriate sexual behavior, harassment, and abuse. More than 100 women have since opened up with sexual assault allegations against Weinstein, helping to spark the Me Too movement across Hollywood and other industries. The defendant is before the court charged with two violent B felonies for two separate forcible sexual assaults against two different women. In May 2018, Weinstein was arrested by the NYPD and indicted on charges by two women of rape, criminal sex act, sex abuse, and sexual misconduct. The allegations about Weinstein's casting couch behavior bring to light a practice that's been common throughout Hollywood over the years. Ken Oletta nearly broke the Weinstein story years ago and is currently writing a biography about him. If you go back in movie history, Hollywood history, there are untold examples of abusive behavior by studio heads. The casting couch, which is the phrase that Harvey used. And there was a casting couch, and young starlets succumbed uh, in exchange for roles in movies, etc. But very rare was the incidence of these studio heads actually raping a woman and doing some of the things that Harvey Weinstein is accused of doing. So that's different. Has there ever been a criminal trial like Harvey's going through? No, there have been scandals in the movie business over the years. But the Harvey trial, the studio head trial, and you know the consequences of losing that trial is life imprisonment. The minimum sentence for rape is 20 years to life. Unheard of. Despite Weinstein's bid to move the trial out of New York City, it began January 6th of 2020 at the courthouse in downtown Manhattan. The big question for the trial is how will the jury react to all this? How will they react to what they know now about Harvey? Ari Wilkenfeld is a civil attorney who specializes in sexual harassment. He represented an accuser of Matt Lauer. We're dealing with a binary. Did this happen? Did this person say yes? Was physical force used? It's a yes or no question. The jury doesn't really get an opportunity to say maybe it was in the middle. His people worry about that. They worry that the people don't go in as a blank slate. They go in knowing who Harvey Weinstein was. So it's not a foregone conclusion that Harvey is either going to be declared innocent or, or guilty. We don't know yet. Today was a good day for Mr. Weinstein. I think it shows uh, the strength of our case. The trial is expected to last two months, beginning with a jury selection process. The prosecution and defense each are looking for different kinds of jurors. If this was a civil case, um, like the kinds that I try, in terms of selecting jurors, uh, the, the types of people that the plaintiff would be looking for, I believe, would be, would be people who you know have heard about the case and have pretty well-formed opinions about it. If I were a defense attorney looking to pick a jury for this case on the civil side, I believe I'd be looking for people who haven't formed a strong opinion yet about the case and probably people who are a little bit more rigid in their thinking about how a victim behaves. There are two women that have brought charges and will testify against Weinstein, but their lingering correspondence with him after the incidents that they accuse him of make things difficult for the prosecutors. The two women who are bringing charges against Harvey, one allegedly occurred in 2006, the other occurred in 2013. And one of the issues that arises in any trial when something happened so long ago, was there evidence of that? It just, is the only evidence that you told friends or loved ones about it or family? Harvey's defense is that what he did was consensual. What you ultimately end up with is a swearing contest. Both witnesses get sworn in, they're telling completely divergent stories, and you have to convince the jury that your client is telling the truth. Through a combination of having credible testimony from your client and also being able to punch holes in the other side's client is how these cases are won and lost. The two women wrote him emails after his alleged acts claiming uh, things like, I miss you, can I come to a screening, etc. In cases where there is ongoing either relationships or interactions between the alleged victim and the alleged accused, it's always a problem. Victims of sexual violence, sexual assault, harassment at work, they often behave in ways that seem counterintuitive to people who have never been victimized. They may maintain a romantic relationship with the person who has harmed them, which would seem to indicate that there was no problem. 
when people are assaulted, either by a family member or a coworker or by anyone who belongs to a community in which they have to regularly interact, that there is enormous pressure on the victim to figure out some way to make the original act go away, to clean it somehow. That's one of the harder things to explain to a juror. The goal of the defense will be to discredit the women taking the stand. They have to attack the women's credibility on the stand in order for Harvey to be exonerated. In civil harassment work and in also criminal harassment work, the defense would rely on what is horrifically um, titled the nuts and sluts defense, which is if you've got a victim, you make her look like she's either you know mentally deranged or promiscuous or some other way asking for it, but not to be trusted. However, like the Cosby trial, the judge has enacted a rule that allows other women who haven't brought charges to testify on Weinstein's behaviors. One thing is really significant in this case. The judge has invoked something called the Malinau rule. This was something invoked in the Cosby case. If you remember Bill Cosby's case, the first trial ended in a hung jury. The judge then, in the second trial, invoked with the Malinau rule and allowed five women to testify that the behavior that the woman who's accusing Cosby of sexual violence to her, he did the same thing to the five of them. And so that became a defining moment in the jury's mind. The judge in this case, Judge Burke, has invoked the Malinau rule and is allowing three women to testify that he did it to them. And that's a setback for Harvey. At this moment, it's difficult to say which direction the trial could take and what will happen afterward for Weinstein. If Harvey is not convicted, I think he will try and get back in the movie business. That's what he loves, that's what he's good at. I think it'd be very hard for him to navigate that road back, however, because whatever happens in the criminal trial, the public believes he's a predator. And so I, I, I can't imagine him succeeding and people wanting to be in business with him. You know, we have a term in law, which is you can't unring a bell. That's used when you present evidence to a jury and then you take it away later on and say, ignore that. And the lawyer always says, you can't unring a bell. You can't unhear what you've heard. You can't unsee what you've seen. And I don't think any of us can unexperience what we've experienced in the last two plus years. I don't think there's any going back. Stay tuned to Variety for all the latest information.